What's up everybody? Welcome back. Um, I'm a little under the weather today. I uh, got a little bit of some cold symptoms and a cough, but not a terrible sore throat. So I kind of felt like, yeah, I feel a little better than I actually thought I would waking up this morning, but definitely not a hundred percent. But I'm realizing, gosh, what a variety on my channel this week. We started with a pregnancy vlog, then we did a declutter, then we did like the best of everything at Sephora, and now we are doing a drugstore shop my stash. I've gotten really good feedback anytime I've done a video, you know, shop my stash style here on my channel. I think it's just fun to pull some unexpected things back into the conversation, you know? And I didn't do this one like really surprise style, like reach in and who knows what you'll get. I just went in picking things, some of them that I knew like, oh my gosh, that's so good. I can't believe I haven't reached for that in a while. And there are some things that I just couldn't quite remember what my experience had been. So we're gonna just dive in and see how it all goes. It's all drugstore though. And I think you may recognize a lot of these things that maybe I have talked about in the past or maybe just some notorious drugstore products. Like I think you'll know what I mean, like certain things that have become kind of iconic drugstore items. Here's the first one, my Maybelline Master Prime. This is my Hydrate and Smooth. Have not reached for this guy in a while, but it does definitely qualify for the type of primer I like to have on my skin. And oh yeah. I remember why I like this so much immediately. Now I already have my Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base on, which is giving me a lot of moisture, but this is definitely adding a little moisture, but the slip across the skin is really nice. Make sure I just get that nicely patted in kind of around the eye area too. Make sure any dry areas are kind of covered by that. Sometimes I get very like autopilot mode, especially when I'm talking to you guys. Like I'll just slap something on and not really think about how I'm doing every little thing unless I am purposely describing it. Okay, talking about iconic drugstore things here. Let's go L'Oreal True Match. This is actually something I received probably in a PR package I want to say a year or so ago, maybe a little less. I have this in the shade Creamy Natural C3. It's a cool shade. I honestly cannot remember the last time I used True Match foundation. So let's check it out. I'm really excited. Um, when I think of traditional, like super classic liquid foundations, this does come to mind. And it looks like it's going to be a pretty good shade for me too. But you got that bottle. No pump. That's when you know you're kicking it old school with your foundation. Of course, this begs the question, who's still using L'Oreal True Match all the time? I'm using my Sigma um, F84 brush. I kind of like it for really liquidy things and it spreads really evenly across the skin. Looking like a pretty solid like medium coverage here right now. It's amazing what L'Oreal has done like in their foundation line now, like the different levels of coverage that have come out and at one time, you know, you didn't think about there being much more coverage than just, you know, whatever the standard liquid a brand was putting out, but now they've got the Pro Matte and the Pro Glow and like that infallible full coverage long wear. All these different varieties. I feel like we have so many more foundation options and so many foundations that we'll pay about double for in the drugstore, right? And of course, right after applying foundation, I blew my nose and essentially wiped everything off the tip of my nose. I'm gonna reapply a little bit right in here. And I'm actually gonna build just a bit right in this kind of zone. It's not that the medium coverage is a bad thing. I just kind of want to see for myself how it builds. Also, I have the pleasure of having a lovely canker sore on the back side of my tongue over here. I feel like I'm talking different too. It's fun. Challenges abound. So, nose correction check. It is buildable. Like that, that definitely upped me coverage wise. Just kind of going over that area. Looking up close, like I really can't complain. It does not look too heavy. It does not look patchy or uneven. So there's L'Oreal True Match. Okay. Next up, another drugstore icon. I got out my um, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. Still to this day, like isn't it the best selling concealer in the drugstore? I got it in Fair. I actually have this in three versions. I've got the brightener shade, which has like this much left. I've got the neutralizer shade, which has like this much left. And then this full one of Fair. This particular one came not all that long ago as Maybelline had put out a PR package with some of their best-selling products. Let me unbox that one. I'm kind of using this to just brighten 
any area. <laughs> I'm pretty generous with this product because I know my skin can handle it. Like I'm, I'm very familiar with the way this goes on. It's a thin concealer. It is not at all quick to look cakey um, and it actually can cover. And I've really liked the um, brightener version sometimes, like the pinkiness of that can help me a lot. But I haven't used a ton of this just flat out fair skin tone shade. It's more coverage than you even really expect. But I think this is one of those great concealers that would suit a lot of skin types because it just doesn't have a lot of weight to it. It does offer up, I think, a little moisture. Not a ton, though. It's not going to leave you feeling sticky at the end. So there we go. Under eyes feel really extra super brightened right now. The next thing I pulled out is a very old school loose powder here from L'Oreal. It's the Hydra Perfect. This is a product that I think you only find in Walmart. I have it in the shade Light and it's a really good powder. Like I wish it was more readily available to everyone because it's a very nice lightweight not too makeup-y looking powder. Um, I've got a little bit just kind of floating here on top so I'm going to grab my e.l.f. small tapered brush and I will use that to gently lightly set my under eye and my t-zone area. I've got another powder that I love so so much just all-purpose kind of style powder that I haven't used in a while so I intend to use that all over my face but this is just gonna set some places. Yeah this is a legit really nice powder. It's just a good formula. I don't know why they're not kind of promoting it more, putting it out there more. I do think loose powder is a thing that people's eyes have been open to, you know, quite a bit after the baking trend and just in general, I think it's something people want to have access to. Anyway, this is a really nice one. It does not look thick on my skin. Then again, I do make a point to apply it very, very lightly. Then all over my skin, this is the product I was talking about that I've kind of neglected for a little while, but I absolutely love it. It's the Milani Prep Set and Glow. This is like a an illuminating translucent powder so it's just in the one shade and it gives you this really beautiful veil across your skin like I mean it's just lovely it kind of I don't know resurfaces your skin somehow just to the naked eye you look slightly less dry this can even you out a little bit but don't seek this for coverage look for it more as something that's gonna make you look slightly more radiant but in the most subtle easy way. So I literally go all over my face when I wear this and I just feel like it gives this little tiny veil. It kind of is the effect, the subtleness of um, an hourglass ambient lighting powder or something like that. Now I'm going to keep holding onto that brush and what did I pick for bronzer? Oh yeah! Okay here's another one that I know I love so much. It's my e.l.f. bronzer palette in the deep bronzer shade. Um, definitely found this to be an alternative to a palette that Lorac had out. It was like a four pan bronzer palette and I was really enjoying that but I realized that this could be another alternative. It's got one that has, it, it looks like a little sparkle. I tell you that really doesn't translate on the skin. This is kind of a satiny finish and then two mattes right here and I really like the deep because it's just like all the options. It all really shows up. I'm actually going to take this kind of warmer looking shade up here in the corner, the upper corner. It's all a corner and a square, right? Um, and I'm going to take this around my hairline. I love these powders. These e.l.f. four pan things that actually pop out of their palette. They're so good. And I think they did get a lot of buzz um, a while ago, but not so much anymore. They have blush palettes that are really nice and pigmented. I'm going to grab a couple of those shades and take them down my neck and then we will go for the cheekbone. Is leopard back in style? I don't even know. I, I just know I will always wear leopard regardless, but sometimes it's kind of nice to know if you're in style or not. I feel like I've seen more of it lately, so that's why I ask. Leopard's like my favorite neutral. Now I think I'm going to take a little more targeted brush. This is my Moda um, contour brush, just like my highlight and glow, only a little bit bigger. And I'm going to go to this kind of cool, deeper shade right here. I'm going to contour with that. Don't go too low, Em. Okay. It's just not so fun shopping your stash, reminding yourself of older goodies. I bet everybody's got at least one or two of these lurking around somewhere. Love that tone for contouring, my goodness. Not working hard to build it up. It's nicely pigmented, but it's not scary pigmented. I think we all know what I mean by that. Dang, I look downright chiseled today. Take a little bit right in here. What's up now, pregnancy bloat? Maybe even take a little bit of that cool shade down the sides of the nose. I'm not a big nose contourer ever because I actually have like a bone in my nose that 
if I let any amount of dark powder kind of come on it, it like accentuates that little bone somehow. It just makes everything look a little less smooth. So definitely look at your own face and when somebody else is doing something in a tutorial, think, you know, is that actually gonna benefit my face shape or am I just doing this for the sake of following a tutorial? I chose a blush. Um, I realized I had several of these in my collection. It's an LA Girl blush, just blushing in the shade Just Playful. And this is kind of a pretty like dusty neutral color. Um, it looks like I've kind of used it quite a bit actually, but I don't, I don't remember it that well. I want to see how much color this gives off on the skin. Oh yeah. Yes, definitely pleased with that. Okay, it's a matte blush. Feels weird using a matte blush because I've been using that glowy palette from Beauty Bakery like nonstop. Um, but that is a really pretty tone. I'm into that. It's like more rosy on the cheeks than you would even really anticipate. Yeah, I'm gonna be reinvestigating all the ones that I have here. I think I have a really like brighter pink one. I feel good in this shade. That's really nice. I know, powder, powder, powder. We got a lot of powder steps, but I think I picked the right setting spray for all this stuff. Um, this is the Revolution Shimmer Brick in Radiant. I have several of these because I got into sort of an obsession with the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Bricks, but didn't want to buy the, all the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Bricks. Um, you know, I have a, a few that came in a palette, one freestanding one, and then I realized like Revolution had all these. This one in Radiant, as I recall, like the top colors create a pretty great highlight. So let's try that. Ooh, pretty. Yeah. Very into that. Yeah, my skin needed that little luminosity there. Um, the top shade is actually pretty golden-y. Like it's, it looks just creamy, but it's got bit of a golden sheen. And then these are fun because you can target certain shades and get like a quick eye look with stuff like this. Um, Physician's Formula, of course, has the shimmer strips as well. I have a few of those. They're not as easy to find everywhere, though. I hate when brands do that. Kind of like with L'Oreal and the powder. It's like you might get lucky, find one somewhere. But I wish brands could stay a little more consistent with where they're offering this stuff. Feeling very glowy. Um, you know, the cheeks have come to life. Oh, that coffee. I got a new kind of creamer now. It's like, I want to say it's toasted marshmallow mocha or something. I chose the Milani Make It Dewy setting spray. It says Hydrate Illuminate Set. And I knew I kind of settled on the fact that I enjoyed the Make It Last, and I thought that that worked pretty well. Make It Dewy, how we doing? Wow, um, I, I actually can instantly see a difference just looking up close at the face I've been looking at, the very matte face. Feel a little more dewy. Let's actually do a little more. I think sometimes you just gotta look at like the manner in which you applied your makeup, the stuff you have on all over, and can your face take the additional sprays or a, a spray that might be more hydrating like this. For eyebrows, I couldn't find a whole lot of things that I hadn't used in a while. The only thing I could really point to was this um, CoverGirl, like it looks like a brow pomade type thing. Shade is 710 and it's got like your little applicator tool that you flip over there, open it up. Um, yeah, this, this has been used a little bit, but not tons. I just honestly can't really remember what my experience has been like. The tough thing about sometimes these itty bitty pots is that you have to go like straight down in and you can't quite tell how much you're loading up your brush. Uh-oh, how did I, how did I streak that far out of line? Correctable. Tone seems to be good. Biddy's got the same cough right now. I mean, I have not been more sick on and off with colds than I have this past year, which has been Belle's first year in pre-K. Like, she's brought home a lot. Before that, it's not like we don't get her out and stuff, like we do things, we're around people and whatnot, but I think it's hard to mimic, really, the experience you're gonna have at pre-K, unless you're in like a daycare setting, you know? So we've all been sick a little bit more than usual, but the good news might be that this is preparing Biddy's immune system before she'll have to go. You know a product that I've never tried that's really hyped up, and I think this is gonna be a future video idea for me, um, like finally trying <laughs> certain things, but the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade never ever used it. I feel like, you know, I've tried a couple pomades here and there, a couple I've liked, some not so much, but it's not like ever been, I've never thought of it in my mind as like my ideal format. Now maybe I'd try the Anastasia and it would change my world 
and I'd feel like it was the best. I just have never ever used it. And I'm trying to think what are other products like that? Maybe you guys even know like things you haven't seen me use that have been really like maybe best selling or loved products. There may not be a lot, but there's got to be some more. Okay, so I've got that in, and judging by the just the texture of it, the way it was going in, I'm not sure if it's going to hold wonderfully well or not. So in the spirit of old school, I'm going to take my CoverGirl clear brow gel that I happen to have here and kind of help this out a little bit, just in case. This is just my little brow insurance here. For eyeshadow, guys, I wanted to pull something out that a lot of you would be familiar with, but maybe you haven't used in a while. Maybelline The Nudes. I remember when I got the scoop on this, like, the Maybelline PR agency contacted me and let me be, like, the first YouTuber to show this and give the first look at it. I think underneath that, I am going to go with Old Faithful Milani because I think I may need it. I just have not used that in the longest time, and I can't even quite remember how all the shadows are gonna react. As far as I recall, you know, some shades, uh, they're all different textures. Some are gonna be better than others. Some shades are better than others. That reminds me of this, um, <laughs> I don't know how Bub and I got on the topic. Oh, we were watching golf, and I was like, I remember watching a lot of golf in the 90s with my dad. Not necessarily watching it with him, but it was like on in our house. And there would always be these Michelob beer commercials, and the slogan was, Michelob, some days are better than others. And there were always like these cheesy clips, and, and I found the perfect example of this. I'm going to link to it below. I found this on YouTube, and it's like, you know, a guy hits a hole in one and he makes like this face to the camera. And then like there's this woman like covered in monkeys. You see, and there's like a line of dudes going like this. Like everybody's having like the best day, you know, because they're drinking Michelob beer. And Bub, I've got to get a clip of him singing the song because he totally like mocks the song. He has this like funny rocker voice that he does like. We're, we're re completely re-obsessed with this commercial. In case you wanted to know what we do on our off time. But you know what's funny? This came out how many years ago? Gosh, I was in the pink room in the other house, so maybe around 2010, 2011, like quite a while back. Look how cool everything is. And I feel like everybody these days is saying, oh, all the palettes are warm. No, I feel like there's been a major growth of warm palettes coming out, but not all that long before that trend, there was a lot of like this. There was a lot of cool. I mean, you weren't seeing oranges and a lot of coppers. You know, there might be one token coppery quad from a certain brand, but not really that much. So if everybody's thinking like there's nothing cool to pick from, just go back like Go back to just some of the products that were sold. There were a lot of cooler products out there. But anyway, um, back to the story. Uh, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use some of this shade. It has a little shimmer in it, but it looks like a good tone. And we'll go in our crease with that. Make a lobe some days are better than others. And then like something'll happen, like some little thing will go wrong and I'm always quick to say, some days are better than others. It's a nice variation of my favorite phrase, sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. Mm, need a little more. Build it up slightly. It just feels like I'm dealing with the classic Maybelline formula that used to be in all their little quads, you know? And this is actually set up to be um, either trios used together or quads, like yoink, like that. I'm gonna go to this little bit deeper shade. It looks like it has a bit of a rusty shimmer and let that deepen up my crease outer corner. Are they still selling the blushed nudes as well, I wonder? And then I'm just gonna blend over my edge. These are working pretty well for me so far. And then I'm wondering if I could take some of this bronze right up here with a small brush and kind of let this fall over the border. Like there's your little bit of warmth in this palette, sorta. Gosh, it got dark. Getting a little too frisky with my brush there. Yikes. On account of my little like mistake, little over application here, I'm letting this get really smoky on both sides. Just letting that color really grow all over that area. And then I think I'll go to this light shimmer with my sponge tip and maybe cut into that just a bit and let myself have a little brightness right here. Then what? Um, I'm kind of tempted to go maybe just a little mid-tony here on the lid. Like we'll use this shade, this kind of taupe. 
and pat this maybe on the inner part of the lid and then pull one of these really dark shades just to see like how dark are you gonna go okay got that taupe on there that was this shade um, and then I'll go to this black matte black build it up in my outer corner why not I'm really going over like half the lid with it actually To be honest with you, with my, my, my leopard I've got on today, this color scheme in the palette, kind of enjoying this little throwback. Had I not decided to do this video, I'm not sure how long it would have been before I reached for this guy. So I'm letting a lot of this black kind of tap in almost two thirds of the way on my lid, but also hitting the outer corner too. I had a dream last night that I was in a, a cooking competition, but I had to cook things in the dishwasher. Um, it was it was really hard as you would imagine and there were no towels. I don't know why no towels um, I take a, just a hint of that black on this Little outer corner type brush just to really target the crease and people kept asking me if I was gonna use rice And I said no, I don't need rice with this dish I don't even remember what the dish was, but there were three parts and it didn't call for rice is this cooking dream like my mind guilt tripping me about that eight o'clock dominoes I had the other night. I'm kind of murky, smoky, like brown. I'm honestly kind of loving it. I think I'm gonna go back to this, you know, sort of satin finish brown here and let this sort of line my lower lash line with a pencil brush. I feel like even if you don't have this nudes palette, you probably like can get a feel for what I'm doing here. And if you're into it, you could recreate this with a number of other palettes. You know, we creased it up with like this and this. So we use sort of medium to a little bit deeper browns with a satiny finish in the crease. Put some bronze on the border, this on the lid, a little taupe on the lid. Really just a palette of basics. Got that all over there. I feel like I need a, a dark liner maybe in my lower inner rim or maybe just nothing there. Let's go rimless for a minute. All right guys, how's this gonna work out? I pulled this e.l.f. Uh, gel liner or cream eyeliner in punk purple because this was legit the eyeliner I couldn't remember using in the longest time. I wouldn't have really envisioned purple going along with this look, but I guess I'll try it. I've got this little like eyeliner brush from Tarte here that I think I'm going to use. Okay, this has some shimmer in it too. I hope it's dark enough to kind of define. Will it even show up as... Oh, looks a little plummy, but really not that defining. Maybe with a lighter look, this would really show up beautifully, but it's getting a little murky here with that um, black that I used. Try to do a little wing, just a little flick there. Why not? It's going on so nicely, actually. It's gliding right on. And I have kind of gotten a little more interested in cream and gel liners since getting my Bobbi Brown, which works really well in like the tight line inner rim area, actually. So it's funny, Bub um, the other day got to he went to a Cardinals game Tuesday night. He was texting me a couple times like what they were doing and he's like, yeah, we got some nachos. We're at Ballpark Village. Got a huge thing of nachos. And I've been wanting nachos for like a week or so now. Like, you know how I love nachos. And so I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds so good. Then I come to find out they even went to dinner somewhere where they got sushi. And you know, being pregnant, I can't do the whole raw fish thing, but man, some sushi sounds really good too. So it's just like getting tempted and tempted over and over. Okay, that's what I'm doing with my eyeliner. I'm gonna leave it there. Like you can tell, if you look up really close at me, you can see kind of a plumminess coming out of it. Again, I think if it were a lighter eye look, you would see that even more. Okay, so I think it's safe to go in with my lash curler now. And in terms of choosing a mascara, like I'm, I'm tr not trying to keep a ton of mascaras on hand right now, like really keep the mascara collection under control. But I would say the one that I used the longest ago was probably my Wet n Wild Mega Length here. I used this in a Wet n Wild video probably a couple months ago and I did like it better than I thought I would. Yeah, really small brush, rubber bristles, very short bristles. So I feel like really in control of it, you know? Yeah, it's good. It's kind of like a little drier formula that'll build on itself. I don't think I've ever had this good of an experience with a Wet n Wild mascara before. 
And then for lower lashes, just because I don't want to worry about any smudging issues today, I am going to take my Thrive because this just, it's a tubing mascara. It just does not smudge. And for my own safety and the safety of others, I'm going to put this on here. Why the Thrive? In case you missed that story in past videos, CoverGirl Clump Crusher Water Resistant is starting to fail me on lower lash line smudginess. So I'm using this, and then I'm going to try the CoverGirl Active Mascara, as some have told me that that's really doing good for them. Kind of enjoying this eye look. Kind of sultry, but you know, not too over the top. I mean, we didn't pop lashes on or anything. I feel like I actually want just a bit more um, setting powder under the eye. It still feels rather tacky there. Taking a little more of my um, Hydra Perfect from L'Oreal. Just pat a little bit back in here. I gave myself um, two gloss options. I guess it's just going to be a gloss day. Did not even pull a lipstick. Um, two kind of old school things here. A NYX Better Gloss and Creme Brulee. No, this was not my original Creme Brulee. I got this more recently. And then a Wet n Wild Mega Slicks in Raspberry Voice. This one is a little bit shimmery, shiny. This one a bit more nude. I think I'm going to go nude because I just haven't done... A real nude lip in a while. I really do like this shade of gloss though. You'll notice it's kind of actually more opaque than a lot of drugstore nude glosses. Smells really nice. Because I don't know when to quit and I do have this here. What if we took a little, a little dab of this? Mixed. Mix the two up. Not using the wand so as not to compromise the shade. My friend David will appreciate that if he's watching. There you go. Yeah, a little more life there. Kind of turned peach a little bit. Let's do the hair somewhat. Go ahead and get that taken care of. This was freshly washed last night, so this is kind of what I get if I don't do anything to it. I don't mind that. Frankly, there's not a lot I don't like about this look, to tell you the truth. Um, I feel like, you know, with the L'Oreal True Match foundation, it was kind of average for me, sort of, you know, putting it on. It was medium coverage. It didn't look too thick on the skin. You could build it up a little bit. It was kind of an average foundation experience for me. But as I look at my skin now, like I'm looking up close and, and I feel really good about the way the skin looks. So I think some of that definitely does come back to the foundation and it not being too heavy. The Maybelline Instant Age Rewind, like this is a great concealer option. I do use this stuff on and off in the various tones that I have. And I do think I'll start using the Fair More because that was really brightening. Love the Milani Pre Prep, set, and glow. It may have been hard to pick up on on camera, but this gives the most gentle little easy sheen just all over the skin. It's great if you're doing a really matte look and you don't want to be too shiny, but you just want things to come off more natural. Highly recommend that product. Absolutely love the e.l.f. Bronzer Palette. The Deep Bronzer Palette I think gives you a lot of options. They're very pigmented, but easy to use. This LA Girl Blush was gorgeous. Love that. Um, the Revolution Brick. The Shimmer Brick and Radiant was great, but like I said, just depending on what brands you have easiest access to, you could get it from Revolution, Bobbi Brown if you want to get really fancy with it. Also, you might find some Physicians Formula that have this style. The Nudes Palette, it's just like not a total essential, I feel like. Knowing what I know now about all the different eyeshadow options that are out there and the look that this created, super duper basic. So maybe this inspired you somewhat in some way on the eye look, but you don't necessarily have to have this because these are pretty common colors. Oh, the primer was great. I'm going to be working that in more. The Make It Dewy, I think, helped this look in particular. If I was already pretty tacky or doing a pretty like powder-free look, I probably wouldn't use this. This gel line We'll see how well this lasts throughout the day, if it starts to fade or wear away. Um, I don't recall this being a fully waterproof product, but I, I just can't recall, so we'll see. The Mega Length is pretty impressive as far as like, I have not had great experiences with Wet n Wild mascara, so that was nice. And NYX Better Gloss and Creme Brulee, can't we all like feel nostalgic for that? And a Wet n Wild gloss, like I was using Wet n Wild Mega Slicks back in high school, y'all. This was fun, but you sometimes gotta kinda do this thing on purpose, you know? You gotta set out like, I am going to shop my stash, I am going to pull for things that I have not used in a while. So thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you very soon. Bye!